Good morning, HU. Uh, let's worship together. in um, Psalm 146. I'm just going to be um, reading verses 1 through 2. Uh, I think that they really go with these two songs, and um, I think that they provide a sense of hope, especially in this time. Um, so Psalm 146, 1 through 2, it just says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. So let's lift this next song up just with that in mind. Jesus, you are. 
Welcome to CMC Week. Uh, if you don't know me already, my name is Amanda Morris Campbell, and I am the programs assistant for the Campus Ministries Department, specifically the CMC program. Um, so this is CMC Week. This is a time when your CMCs get a chance to get up in front of our community and talk about things that they believe God has to say to our community in this moment. 
So this conversation started back in January uh, when we started thinking about what the theme for the week would be, what we felt was timely for the community, things we felt God pressing um, on our hearts. And uh, as some of you probably remember, a lot of the conversations that were happening around campus had to do with authenticity. So even though life has changed, the world has changed, campus has changed, and our community is scattered all over the place, we still believe that this is a message that God has for our community in this particular moment as we close out a very strange year and start to think about an, um, coming back in the fall. So you're going to hear from a couple of our CMCs this week. Today, uh, Kelsey Anderson and Hannah Sneed, and then Jesse Grimm on Thursday with some thoughts on authenticity. And as an introduction to that, um, I wanted to point out some things that I've noticed as I've lived in this community for the last eight years. One of those is that as a community, um, I certainly experienced this feeling that there needed to be a certain level of okay in order to be acceptable. There's a certain level of sameness and agreeability that we need to reach in order to be accepted, in order to be a cohesive community. So this week is really curated to reject that idea, reject that pressure, reject that lie. Um, authenticity begins with each of us. Authenticity begins when we are a little more honest with ourselves, more honest with God, and then honest with each other. And that's what your CMCs are going to talk about this week. We really hope that you feel empowered to be more transparent by the week's messages and that God has something to say to you. Before we flip over to the girls this morning, uh, I'm going to read a really quick prayer and hope that it prepares your heart for what God has to say today. Holy God, we ask to be interrupted, to be challenged, to be spoken to. We invite all the parts of ourselves to your table, trusting that you will work in us. Show us each where we need to grow and grant us the courage to do it. Speak, God. Your people are listening. Amen. Hope you enjoy the week. Hey, everyone. It's Hannah. Uh, currently, I am in a dorm room. I am one of the few students that are staying here on campus, and I'm so thankful for the school, but just an update for you guys. It's been really hard. Um, with the campus so empty, not being able to see anyone in this quarantine, it's been kind of tough. Online learning is hard for me, but you know what? I'm making it. I'm here. I'm okay. Um, but I'm here because I want to talk to you guys and continue the conversation about practicing authenticity. You know, I think this is something that we all need to hear right now, including myself. Um, the key points and steps to practicing this, you know, what perfect time to practice being real with yourself and honest with yourself than in quarantine um, when you don't have really anything else to do, I guess. So when talking about authenticity, um, one of the first steps that I think um, we need to take is to honor yourself. And what I mean by that is to be honest with yourself. You know, this is a perfect time for self-reflection. Let the Lord search your heart and make known to you what you need. And that is a very hard thing to do is to be honest with yourself and letting God search your heart. It can be a really scary thing, but honestly, if we want to be practicing authenticity and being real, that's what we really need to do, and it's something I even have to practice doing while in quarantine, because there's been a lot of things I'm learning about myself that I don't always like, but that's just kind of how it is. Um, you know, while reflecting, um, self-reflecting, I think another thing we need to start practicing is accepting is accepting our story and not being ashamed of that. And what I mean by that is also being willing to share your story along the way and as it's happening. We need to be willing to find the safe people to talk to because that and be honest with them because that also invites others to be honest as well. So when practicing authenticity and being honest, you know, one thing I've had to do while in quarantine is be very honest with myself. I've been in denial about this entire thing and not wanting to accept the fact that I can't see anyone. Um, it's been really hard and I've been very angry about it to be honest. 
you know, I have moments of sadness that wash over me and then I get upset because one, I'm lazy, two, I'm unmotivated, and three, I have no self-discipline. And I don't want to think I'm alone in that. I think we all have these moments where we're just lazy, unmotivated. We want to be done with school if you're a student or we just want to get outside and do something, see people. I apologize to all of you extroverts out there. It's even hard for me as an introvert. Um, but I get really mad at myself for these things. And, you know, sometimes I'm afraid that I won't be able to do well in school because it's hard to learn online and I feel so much shame about it. Um, I want to do good. I want to do better. But that's something I've had to be honest about and honest with myself about um, and realizing the things that I need to work on, which is uh, my laziness and being um, self-disciplined. Um, taking a look at um, some verses here. Paul says in Romans seven eighteen, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. You know, this just tells us that this has always been a thing. You know, this is nothing new when it comes to um, self-discipline or anything that we're struggling with, because we are born sinners and... Um, you know, we're going to struggle with life, but that's, I guess that's how we were, um, because of the fall, and, you know, that's something we have to accept about ourselves. But also in Second Corinthians 11.30, he says, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Guys, I am so weak, and in this quarantine and I don't always do the best with keeping up with the semi assignments or at least getting them done at a very good time. Usually I'm doing them at then late in the evenings, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, but I know that when I call upon the Holy Spirit, he's willing to meet me where I'm at. He's willing to meet me in my loneliness, in my laziness, and get me help get me through the day and through my homework and stay healthy. Because one thing that I've really had to wrestle with and learn and be okay with is the fact that God's presence alone is powerful enough to do all those things for me. And his presence is all I really need. I need to be okay to sit with his presence and be okay with just that. No one else's. Another way in practicing authenticity um, is to honor others. You know, we need to treat everyone the way we want to be treated, you know, not how they treat us. I don't think that would be a very wise choice. Not everyone's going to treat us um, very well. You know, before you start criticizing other people, think about how the same can be done to you. Everyone has their own experience. They have their own story that has shaped that has been shaped through their own life experiences, and it's all going to differ from your own. You know, especially in a time like this, we, ha we have to start with ourselves, and we had to think, well, I want a safe place, so I should make a safe place for someone else as well. You know, for me, um, I'm very passionate about ending sex trafficking, and part of that is trying to end um, pornography use. And, you know, I've been um, sharing petitions uh, to sign to shut down Pornhub because of how huge the sex industry is with trafficking, especially right now during quarantine. Um, that's very popular right now. But you know what? If someone were to come to me and they were to talk about their struggle with a porn addiction... It would be so easy for me to just get so angry and judgmental and just jump to conclusions about them. But that wouldn't be creating a safe environment for them. First of all, they've already been so brave and courageous to admit that to someone. But I need to be able to call upon the Holy Spirit and say, how can I show them Jesus? You know, they need that grace, love, and mercy, just as I would need it. 
And also, I need to realize that something deeper is going on with them. Um, if they're having that kind of addiction, any kind of addiction, there's always something deeper going on, and that's something that they need help through. In Romans 14, 1 through 3, one through three, it says, Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. And later it says, For God has already accepted him. You know, God's accepted him, and so should I. I'm not the one to condemn them. That's on God, and I need to show them God's love. Another one, Titus 3, 1 through 3, uh, Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility toward all men. At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. You know, that is so important to remember. Before you start judging someone else, remember that there's something that you struggle with too, and you wouldn't want someone to judge you um, for that as well. In Colossians 4, 5 through 6, it says, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You know, in moments that we want to just judge bef um, before offering grace and forgiveness to someone, just take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to be present with you and be present in that space so that you may offer that grace and that love and that mercy for them. It's only then that you can use the Spirit's discernment and how to act toward others who struggle with something you may not even understand. And finally, I think this is the one that's most important of out of all of these things. And to really practice authenticity, we need to honor God. You know, honor God with your with your time. He is our Father, our Creator. And to be true to ourselves is to understand and accept our identity in Christ as our Father and our Creator. We can't be true to ourselves until we've accepted where we've come from. If we want to be real and... Um, true to ourselves, then we need to try and understand who God is first and then who we are in him because we are all image bearers and we are heirs and we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we need to look to our heavenly father and our creator and we need to make time for him. We need to understand that, you know, if I want to be true and be real with others, then I need to be true and real with honest God, honest with God first, because he, he deserves that time. You know, he, we are not entitled to say no to him. He is the one that gives us an answer and helps us um, in times that we need to be honest with him. And um, I think that's really important to realize is when we have that identity in Christ, and that's when we're truly practicing authenticity is when we acknowledge that, respect that, and use time to be with God. Right now, it's a perfect time because we are in quarantine. And for me, you know, I've been, I've been trying to journal more. I've been trying to dig into my scripture because if I thought I was busy before, I shouldn't really have an excuse now. Um, sometimes I'm like, I feel like I'm too busy now because I have so much homework to do still and learning online sometimes feels like I'm teaching myself things. But that's where you need to practice making time for God now because when all of this is over with, all this quarantine is done with, then you won't be able to make that time with God then. You know, I think Satan it tries to distract us by telling us that, you know, we need to keep busy, we need to keep doing things. But God say no. Be still. Set some time with me. I want this time with you. Because that's how our relationship works. It goes both ways, and you need to set that time with him as well. So I challenge you, you know, in your busyness, whether 
you're a student or you're an essential worker or you just are trying to keep yourself busy, you know, no one else is here to judge you or distract you. No eyes are on you but God's. God sees you and he's just waiting for us to come to him. In Colossians three fifteen through 17, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And you know, whatever we do, we need to do in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to him, to God the Father through him. And that's exactly what we need to do. And the final verse I want to leave you guys with is Hebrews four fifteen through 16. It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. God knows what we're going through. This is no, um, this is no shock to him. No, he didn't, it's not like he didn't see this coming. And sometimes I'm like, what if God planned this? Um, Because he wants us to settle down and take that time to be with him and make time for him as our father, as our creator. Let me pray for you guys. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for creating us in your image and allowing us to... um, delight in you, sit with you, and be present with you. God, I thank you that even in quarantine, you are the one present with us when no others are present. I pray right now that you be with those who are struggling like me in this quarantine, who are lonely and maybe feeling depressed or anxiety and have fear. But God, I pray that you just strengthen us, um, realign our hearts and our minds to be one with you, God. Be in us and help us pursue you in the pursuit of practicing authenticity. Help us to love you, God, so that we may love others better. Thank you, God. You are good, and help us to always remember that. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.